Good morning, everybody. Um, we are about to start our webinar um, entitled Expanding the Circle for Agronomic Success, Agronomic Gain Success, where we're looking at the partnership or collaboration between the CG and Solidaridad being supported by Kivuno. So we've got a, our panelists today who've joined us who are going to share with us the journey that they have taken, that the three institutions have taken to implement a project for the benefit of farmers. Farmers who plant soy, who produce soy in what we call the Chinyanja Triangle. Without giving away too much about what this is about, I'll move on um, to the next stage of this session, which is basically um, sharing a video of the project of what the project is about um, before we give the stage to Dr. Isaiah Nyakumbo, who will take us through the perspectives of the project from the CG's um, angle. With that, I will rush straight to the video, Tim, so that you can get an appreciation of um, the advisory use case that is being implemented in the Chinyanja Triangle. Soybean is a versatile crop that can be used to improve soil health, provide household nutrition, generate income, act as animal feed, and serve as raw material for cooking oil. There is a growing demand for soybean globally. However, its production in Southern Africa is low, contributing just 1% of the global output. Smallholder farmers' yields are very low due to poor agronomic practices, so fertility, pests, diseases, uncoordinated markets, and quite often poor policy incentives. Anoti pamunda wanga umene tu kupanga poka fuku wanye ngo ya kaza limeza soya. Tiri ndi maproti wako wana sikisi. Maproti amene o ndi mateni by seveni. Amene tinazaramo ndeu zama zandi tumbu iwili. Tiporore ndi shiteze foro. Kafuku fuku amene yo ati tandiza. Amene tinga zivire tu zoko ora zatu. Amene tiku lima. Ni ma data mene ita zarira. Tizi zewa kuti tika zara data ya kuti. Tiko lora zwa shuluka za kuti. Tika zara so data ya kuti. Tiza kora zwa shuluka za kuti. Solidaridadi, together with the CGIAR centers like CEMIT, IIT, and ICRA, and the National Agricultural Research System and other partners are working towards resolving these issues by creating a digital advisory tool will be a mobile operated app that we will uh, be using and farmers will be able to then just ask their phone for these things and their phone should be able to answer these questions for them. In finding a specific location in a particular country, I need to know when I should be planting in a particular season. What variety should I invest in? How much fertilizer can I apply? And then how can I do this? These are the four main components that uh, this app seeks to achieve. We say, my credit credit for we should have on the best version of the app. <laughs> Kuyomo na kanulima moche pirabo, na kanulima soya wanekala, amene chimangaso wanekala. Ndipo pamekala mo, di makolora be zosa kwa nila kweni kweni, monga kusoya ni makolora 10 bags, amene kuchimanga ni makolora 25 bags. Kupika chaka cha 2013, ulimiwanga unakula. Chonjo, nafika polima three kazi ya soya, amene chimanga three kazi. Three acres of soya, nakora fifty bags. I mean, twelve acres of chimanga, nakora forty-five bags. 
Amen. <laughs> The soy use case is really um, trying to address some of the challenges faced by farmers in the region in producing soybean by providing them with appropriate agronomic solutions for their particular locations. And hopefully, this will help them to be more productive uh, and uh, be able to participate more effectively on the market. <laughs> Sina karana pasi, nchori nga chona uti, chipange beka fuku fuku. Kwa nina uti, chione, tiko ni mbe uzi, tiko zwa uzi, tiko uzi, tiko uzi, pa eka la remote. Our overall objective is to co-create, validate, and develop gender and youth responsive and demand-driven soybean targeted agronomic solutions to farmers in the Shinyanja Triangle. Basically, going to co-create and develop uh, the tool itself. We then going to set up field trials in which we then uh, try to refine this tool, and then we validate uh, this tool, and finally we then go out to deploy and scale the tool in the Chinyanja Triangle with farmers. These technologies have to be uh, scaled beyond just the Chinyanja Triangle. Over to you, Isaiah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Barbara. Good morning to everyone, and uh, afternoon or evening to those who are um, far from this region. I'm connecting you from Arari. My name is Isaiah Nyagumbo. I'm from Simit, and I'm based in Arari. I currently um, lead this uh, Solidaridad uh, soy use case. Um, you've basically heard some of the details pertaining to how, what the challenges are with regards to soy production in the region. So the issues of uh, um, low productivity, the issues of um, low participation, high cost of soybean seed, um, uh, just the non-use of fertilizer by farmers in the soybean systems. And uh, apparently, despite the availability of inoculants for many years, uh, inoculants are still hardly used. Then we have low adoption of uh, technologies and farming practices, such as the way uh, the planting configurations. We're looking at weak seed systems um, that are characterizing the region. And then of late in the last season, we also faced with this uh, leaf rust problem, which uh, affected many farmers. So we are all about trying to see how we can support the increased productivity and the scaling of uh, soybean in the region. Um, please move on to the next slide. So what are the key characteristics of uh, the needed solutions when we were trying to work out ourselves how and what we could do regarding soybean? Um, we realized that there was need for interventions that align well with the farmer's priorities. Um, interventions should also address the current challenges in soybean uh, production. Uh, and they should be low hanging fruits in a sense. And we needed agronomic recommendations that will be available to farmers via some kind of mobile app, because we know extension is not easily accessible by farmers to in every corner of the region. So we needed simple solutions that could be accessed uh, via a mobile uh, platform. And solutions should be ideally be validatable. So we need that uh, to check whether the solutions that we are putting across can be tested and uh, found to, to make sense. Please move on. So what is our solution? Uh, basically, we have partnered with uh, these organizations that have been mentioned, uh, uh, that includes Solidaridad, uh, IITA, um, CIMIT, um, government institutions, and uh, uh, the World Agroforestry Center, uh, and uh, uh, many other partners, including the private sector, who are also part of it. Uh, I must say also, farmers are a very important and integral part uh, of this thing. Then uh, what did we then try to do? We firstly tried to co-create uh, solutions with the farmers uh, and various stakeholders, looking at the challenges, identify key priorities, uh, 
brainstorming on solutions and uh, uh, develop some kind of priority interventions that we could uh, focus on in spite of these many diverse uh, challenges that farmers face. Please move on. So what did we really uh, kind of, oh, sorry, where, where are we working? We basically working in the uh, area called the Chinyanja Triangle, which is, uh, it is not a country by the way, it's, a, it's just a region that is constituted of Malawi, uh, Mozambique and Zambia, and mostly with the Chinyanja speaking people. Um, ideally very suitable for soybean production and uh, that is this area we, we are working. Uh, please move on. So we came up with some kind of uh, prioritized solutions or uh, prioritized interventions that we felt uh, were really needed. Um, one of them is the planting debt issue. Farmers are generally having uh, challenges with uh, when to plant, um, given a, a poor start of the season in some cases or a late start. They don't quite know when to start, when to plant, and when when is it conducive to actually plant. So planting date was an issue that was considered very important. Variety choices. We are also looking at site specific fertilizer recommendations. What fertilizer to use in any specific location? Crop management recommendations. Do they use intercrops or do they use uh, soil cropping systems? Uh, then links to input output markets were also raised in the various uh, consultations as a very key issue. Uh, setting up services, shelling services, and, and so on. Uh, then pests and diseases identification were also uh, uh, realized as uh, key issues. So these were some of the general key priority interventions that we felt needed to be attended to with regards to soil production. But we had to focus on a few. Uh, please move on. So we then came up with this dream product, which is focusing on these four priority areas. That is what soy variety to grow in a specific area and when to plant it, what fertilizer to use, and then how do we grow it? So this is really where we are in terms of uh, the focus of this work. It is really trying to address these four key issues. And we are basically hoping that we end up with a, a tool um, that is digitally operated, which you can use on your phone. So wherever you are in the region, you should be able to enter the, and ask the, the, the app to advise you on what variety to use in your specific area. When is it best to plant it? And uh, how uh, can you grow it? And uh, what fertilizers to use? So we actually having inputs there from uh, the Deliver project, which is the, in, the excellence in agronomy component of, of, of the work. And then we also have the transform component, which are our experts who work on modeling tools. And then we have the inputs of solidarity. So we're trying to join hands to then come up with this mobile app. So this is work in progress and we try to advance in that direction. At the end of the day, this is what we would then call the MVP, the minimum uh, viable product. So that is really the, the, the key issue. So let me take you further to show you what we've actually been doing and what's been achieved so far. Uh, please move on. That is the uh, setup of the, uh, the thing. And then uh, I think just to show you some of the challenges that uh, we have a large yield gap between uh, what is actually realized on the ground and what is what what is potentially available. So we can actually find that we can increase the productivity of soybean to about four to five tons, yet farmers are hardly getting uh, a tie. Uh, please move on. Again, we noticed that uh, pea fertilization is a key issue in all three countries. You find uh, you need at least 20 kilograms of uh, uh, phosphorus in, in the system so that uh, you can get increased uh, productivity in, in the system, uh, I would say, yeah. Please move on. Again, rhizobia, like I mentioned earlier on, uh, just the use, the use of rhizobia is a must. Rhizobia is cheap but still we find farmers are hardly being able to access it. And so if you use rhizobia plus the use of inoculant, you really get a, a very improved uh, uh, response to your system in terms of uh, the productivity of soybean. Please move on. 
So the varieties and the planning debt effects have also been looked at. Uh, we did these extensive studies prior to start, starting the work that we, we've been doing. So the correct timing seems to be a very key issue that is uh, important and which can vary yields by as much as 300%. Uh, we also find that farmers are already using mobile operated applications such as uh, the for weather forecasts. This is something that our partners in Kivuno working with Solidaridad are already doing. We're also looking at uh, planning debt by variety experiments that we established in the last uh, season, starting from the last season, I must say. Uh, and uh, we also have these uh, selected what we would call uh, preferred improved varieties that we would say are considered uh, the best varieties or best bet options in each uh, uh, location. We're also looking at uh, local organized on-farm production of improved seeds by Solid Solidaridad. So Solidaridad are already engaged in kind of production of seed uh, locally, um, which is actually helping farmers to reduce costs in terms of access to seed. So supporting these kind of processes was felt also as a very important intervention towards soy production. Please move on. So we've implemented various activities uh, in the Kasungu, in Katete, in Angonia. And uh, all in all, I would say we've uh, engaged up to about 180 farmers. And we've also set up nine replicated uh, on-station experiments that are at Msekera, Chiteze, and Ulongwe um, in the three countries. And uh, what are we doing really with these uh, experiments? The experiments are meant to help refine the model predictions. So if you're going to get the model to tell you what fertilizer to use, surely you need to have been informed, you need to have informed the application about how soybean is responding to different to different fertilization uh, regimes. Similarly for planting dates and uh, also different planting configurations like intercrops uh, and uh, soil cropping systems and the different planting configurations. So all these issues are being looked at through uh, the on-station as, as well as uh, on-farm uh, field experiments, which we then use to uh, validate some of the uh, thinking that is uh, behind uh, the application that we develop. Please move on. So I will just highlight some uh, of the findings from some of the experiments that we have had in the last season. We have had these crop mixes experiments, um, looking at uh, the various issues. We've had also the crop establishment experiments, uh, and the nutrient omission experiments. I think I would say in the last season, all of them were successfully implemented in the three countries. Uh, but we also find that the late planted crops suffered most uh, from uh, leaf rust disease, which uh, kind of uh, retarded or reduced uh, the use there. Um, we, we definitely have uh, different uh, systems that also have been tested in the crop mixes experiment. I think the graphs on the right tell you that uh, uh, the soil cropping systems will always be superior in terms of the uh, amount of soybean that you get per hectare, but the soybean, the, the intercropped systems then uh, tend to have lower yields, but um, the timing of when this happens is also critically important. So the blue graph is the earliest planted crop, whilst the ones on the far right are actually the ones that uh, were planted very late in those systems. Please move on. Again, the issue of uh, inoculants uh, clearly showing here um, that it is important to use inoculants, but of course the responses will vary from place to place. Uh, but uh, just to show you that uh, there has been a lot of work uh, happening and all this is happening through the partnership of EAM in Mozambique, the Mozambican Research Institute. We have DAS in Malawi, the Department of Agricultural Research Services and ZARI in Zambia who are also helping to uh, get this uh, work going. Please, let's move on. Uh, in the field, again, we find in Kasungu, in Angonia, in Katete, uh, yes, 180 farmers involved uh, in validation trials, which are comparing the uh, farmer practices versus what we would call the MVP, uh, the minimum viable product uh, recommendations, which is what we would call the full house. And we're seeing again some very uh, clear patterns with res respect to time of planting, uh, that the variety is key 
and uh, but also the fertilization with uh, um, yeah, the fertilization with pea as well as the use of inoculants sticks out as a very important issue. But uh, also we got into issues with leaf rust in the last season, which uh, I mentioned earlier. But uh, yes, all this is going on and more is actually uh, to be done. So what are we moving on to? Uh, please, let's move on. Yes, uh, we, as we move uh, into, the in the, into the next year and uh, where are we going with this? One issue is that we definitely want to develop this mobile advisory application, which we envisage to be operational by 2024. So it will be integrated to the Aklimo framework, which is a, a framework which has been used uh, extensively in uh, the northern part of the continent as well as the western part of the continent. Um, we're also looking at uh, reinforcing and supporting uh, these um, digital tools with some kind of paper-based advisories, which will be hopefully ready by the end of this year. Uh, already, we're looking at 150, more than 150 farmers having been involved, but we hope to increase these numbers to about 500 farmers uh, by mid-2024. And I think uh, by the end of the project, we hope we'll engage directly more than 30,000 farmers. And uh, I think the digital tools themselves will actually reach more than uh, 250,000 farmers. But I think you'll hear a little bit more from my colleagues. Uh, next, please. So yes, we move on to uh, finalize the data collection with country teams, uh, the integration of their climate framework, uh, getting the digital tools to work. And of course, we are also working uh, not alone, but we're also working with partners and the PhD students who are training and uh, registered with the various uh, institutions globally. I think uh, that will be it. Uh, and uh, I will leave you to listen to, the, uh, to my colleagues from Solidaridad who will also give you the solidarity perspective. I thank you. Thank you, Isaiah. Um, we move on to our next presenter and um, that's that's given Piri. Given is very much involved in the project, um, working on the ground in the Chinyanja Triangle. Um, given, can you share more about um, the initiative and the work that's going on on the ground? Um, and most importantly, why um, this is important? Um, for farmers in, in the region. Over to you, Given. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, afternoon, if, if it's uh, an afternoon in your side of the country. Yeah, my name is Given Piri. I work for Solidaridad uh, in Malawi as a programs manager, but I'm also coordinating the Excellence in Agronomy project. So basically, I, I just want to give you a background of um, Solidaridad. We operate in eight centers, but ours is called uh, Southern Africa Solidaridad Network, which comprises of Malawi, Mozambique, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Zambia. So we have different projects uh, in these countries, ranging from livestock, uh, soybean, uh, uh, and also other uh, related projects. But then um, in 2028, uh, 2018 and 2022, we implemented a, a project we called Practice for Change. Basically this project was looking at addressing the issue of low productivity with uh, smallholder farmers. Uh, as you heard from Dr. Isaiah, we are promoting the seed multiplication, whereby we would want farmers to grant uh, certified the seed. So the past five years, we've been implementing this project in the Chinyanja uh, project, which Dr. Isaiah elaborated on in Mozambique, Malawi, and Zambia. But also, um, next slide. In 2020, 2023, we also had another project uh, which we implemented, uh, the, a project called Soy Trade. And the, the, the aim of this project was to increase the competitiveness of soybean production, trading and 
uh, and processing across the Chinyanja Triangle. Um, it, it appears uh, this, this triangle has potential to produce a soybean, and no wonder within a, a, a period of five years, we implemented uh, two projects just to see how best we can help uh, the, the farmers. Next. So um, I want to take you through to, to the background of the, our involvement and the need to have an uh, advisory tool that could help our farmers. So after implementing uh, the two soy projects in the past five years, we did discover some of the challenges which farmers are facing uh, as they produce uh, their soy. So there have been several challenges. Some have already been highlighted uh, uh, by Dr. Isaiah, uh, one of which is the use of uh, recycled seed. We discover that a lot of farmers are using recycled seed, uh, probably because a certified seed is in some cases expensive or not available in some cases. But also we, we discovered that uh, there's poor fertilization and inoculation. Some farmers are just planting soy without uh, putting inoculants. Another challenge is where uh, there are depressed markets. Uh, in some cases, the, the, the markets are not structured, whereby farmers rely on vendors. And we know uh, what happens with vendors. Uh, sometimes they would tamper with scales and also low prices are offered to these uh, uh, farmers. But also we, we discovered that uh, the farming practices of, of farmers uh, le is leading to low productivity. Uh, in, case, uh, in some cases, uh, we've seen farmers planting late, uh, which to which um, one of the, the trials, one of the experiments that we are doing, uh, we believe that farmers learn better when they see. So what we are doing with excellence in agronomy is we want to showcase if a farmer plants early, if a, a farmer plants late, what would be the use? So this is reflecting on what Dr. Isaiah pointed earlier to say there is significant difference when a farmer plants early or if they plant late. For those that plant early, they will have um, better use. So um, basically, there, there, there are issues that uh, we would want to address. And by the end of this project, we anticipate to have an advisory tool, which um, is going to reach more than 2, 000, uh, 250 thousand farmers across the Chinyanja project. My colleague uh, will explain how this works uh, uh, with Kivuno. But in a, in a nutshell, we, we, we are sure to reach uh, this number because Kivuno registers uh, each and every farmer within uh, the region, whereby those registered farmers are put into clusters and those clusters are led by a lead farmer who is uh, managing around 25 to 30 farmers. So to make sure that we reach out to the rural communities, uh, uh, which most of them are not able to have a smartphone, Kivuno uh, has provided smartphones uh, where these farmers will be able to access uh, the advisory too which in the end we anticipate if farmers follow what the advisory two is telling them in terms of when to plant, what, what kind of fertilizer to, to apply, uh, what inoculants to apply, uh, we envisage that we are going to have improved yields um, from these uh, farmers. And then we believe in the change that matters. Um, if farmers would, would follow through what this advisory tool 
is telling them definitely there will be change. Uh, let me hand over to my colleague to explain uh, the digital aspect um, uh, of the Kivuno. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Given. Over to you, Lydia. Uh, thank you very much, Given. Uh, thank you, Barbara. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning. Uh, you are connecting with me from Lusaka, Zambia. Uh, my name is Lydia Banda. I also work for Solidarity Southern Africa, but I manage the operations for Kuvuno. On to the next slide. So Kuvuno is essentially a, a commercial offshoot uh, service provision uh, entity uh, that was established by Solidaridad. Um, at the center of Kuvuno's operations is to promote wealth for the farmer by leveraging off fit for purpose technological solutions uh, that enable us uh, transcend or uh, support uh, disconnected farmers and transition them into a world where they have access to information and services. And at the center of Kuvuno service offering is the bundled up service approach that leverages of partnerships and digital tools as given and as I have alluded to, with the emphasis and efforts to create an inclusive agricultural ecosystem. Next slide. How Kuvuno essentially approaches this is through three pathways. One being that we build farmer networks on the ground as already alluded by given that enables Kuvuno bridge or create a connection between farmers and organizations that want to provide services and products. Uh, the second pathway looks at Kuvuno bundling up services that address critical issues that have been mentioned by the colleagues, as well as providing alternative payment solutions to mitigate the challenge of access. And lastly, uh, a nudge mechanization that allows and enables organizations to incentivize behavioral change or adoption of certain agronomical practices. Next slide. How Kuvuno essentially works is that Kuvuno is, uh, begins by establishing a physical presence that is manned by human resource, uh, whom we refer to as Kuvuno agents. Uh, these agents are the resource that we utilize on the ground to support the relationship establishment or the creation of the farmer networks into groups of farmers of 20 to about 35 that are capacitated in digital literacy as well as uh, equipped with a communal smartphone uh, to bridge the digital divide gap in farmers accessing information as well as services and products. On the next slide, I will demonstrate how the structure looks like. Essentially in Kuvuno creating a digital relationships with farmers looks at the agents interacting at least with a number of lead farmers who are then connected to the larger group of farmers of 25 to 30. As already explained, under this particular use case, this particular model enables us to, to do two things. One, co-create a solution that enables us create and establish a minimum VP advisory product, but also utilize the same similar model as the means through which farmers can engage, as well as adopt the practices through the MVP product. Uh, next slide. So at the center of this is Kovuno's operational cycle in collecting the relevant data and information, which is quite key and vital in understanding the environmental context uh, that farmers are engaging within the soil production cycle. This particular ecosystem allows Kuvuno to collect key data points that allow organizations such as the Excellence in Agronomy identify areas of interventions that then inform a product or a service that then is developed in order to support farmers, either improve their agronomical practices or foster adoption of good agricultural practices to enable and improve yields. Next slide. This essentially depicts an example of some of the key data collection points at the onset of our interaction with our farmers. As one of my colleagues earlier alluded, Kuvuno's operational engagement with farmers begins by creating a digital relationship 
that sees that Kovuno creates a digital profile that allows us create or collect multiple data points that become effective in understanding the agronomical status of smallholder farmers within the Chinyanja Triangle across the different services and products that farmers engage with. Such a process allows that under this particular use case, we're able to identify areas that are of importance and opportunity for the use case in order to provide advisory products or services that allow farmers make the necessary decision in order to improve their day-to-day -day practices. On to the next stage. In order, based off of the information that then is collected as highlighted by Isaiah, what becomes quite very important is once opportunity areas or areas of impact uh, that farmers on the ground are facing becomes quite key in bundling up services that enable us address those issues critically. Under Kovuno, on our second pathway enables us create what we call bundled up services, which include services such as Soil testing that allows us to understand the soil fertility of our farmers in each particular region and area. Also seed multiplication, which also allows us to provide certified seed as well as opportunities for farmers to address issues of recycled seed. Micro loans that allow us to address limitations around finances, which is one of a major crisis in enabling farmers to access certain commodities and products as well as micro-logistics to support the movement of goods from one location to another. On to the next slide. And to date, under Solidaridad, we offer quite a number of services that address the following key issues. Facilitating micro-logistics to mitigate aspects around transportation and movement of goods and products. Uh, facilitating incentives that are key in allowing organizations that want to continue to foster a particular agronomical practice or behavioral change within our farmers. Uh, facilitating ecosystem for orders uh, to produce, which then allows farmers uh, a platform in terms of linkages to markets, as well as through the data that is collected under their engagements with the various services and digital platforms within our ecosystem. We are able then to present our uh, uh, groups of smallholder farmers that can produce uh, quality products as well as identify farmers who are able to provide the right quantities and yields. As well as collecting and delivering soil testing, which is quite a very critical service in understanding that the start of every production season is understanding the nutritional composition of the soil fertility in each particular area that allows farmers make important decisions on what inputs or fertilizer combinations are required in order to boost the yield production, as well as facilitating digital handshakes between smallholder farmers, as well as private sector organizations, NGOs or government entities that would like to work or produce or deliver services directly to the smallholder farmers. Um, next slide. This here is a depiction of some of the information that then we are able to collect throughout the production season with our farmers as they interact with our various platforms and digital services. This is a profile of Tatalanji, uh, one of our farmers in Malawi, that depicts information through her interaction and engagement with our various digital platforms from the location of her field from the size of the field that she is growing her production to the activities undertaken during the production season to the soil fertility of her soil on the particular field to actually the quality of the soil that has been harvested, looking at components of protein, moisture, oil, as well as carbohydrates, but also mostly in allowing Tatalanji access other incentives such as Zawadi, by actually interacting with our chatbot to determine how many points she's got in order to redeem a product or a service. Next slide. Last pathway, uh, like I alluded to, looks at incentivizing farmers. This is a mechanization or a service under Kovuno that allows entities and organizations within the private sector, within the NGO, or even government entities themselves to foster certain practices on the ground to ensure that farmers continuously adopt services uh, that are provided to them. 
under this particular component proves to be quite key under this particular use case as we try to foster and encourage farmers to adopt the advisory services or recommendations that come through the MVP product. Um, next slide. And through this, they are able to do it through what we call farmer in, uh, farmers interacting with incentives that we call the nudge theory. How they actually do this is to interact with our chatbot called Wadi. Wadi essentially is a platform that allows farmers interact with all various services from our various partners, from our various organizations, as well as entities that we would like farmers to access the services. And this is done through the communal smartphone that is located within the clusters or the circles. And this then allows farmers to consistently access information as well as entities and organizations that choose or want to engage with farmer facing organizations to disseminate information that then allows smallholder farmers address critical issues within their soil production. Next slide. And this here is only again a step-by-step -step depiction of how Zawadi is earned in terms of reinforcing particular behaviors of smallholder farmers to adopt certain practices. Uh, next slide. So and our particular use case as highlighted by my previous two colleagues, what becomes quite prevalent and very important is that Kubuno aims to enrich our services for bundled up services for smallholder farmers. And in order to do this, we would need to engage with a variety of organizations as well as entities that offer the solution that is demanded by our farmers on the ground in relation to some of the challenges that have been highlighted. For example, cropping, who is a partner organization that is supporting us in offering on-farm decision support for smallholder farmers in terms of yield predictions. We also have OCO Insurance, which is a service that we look to provide to farmers to address critical issues of diseases, as well as low yields or harvest during the production seasons. We also have input and offtake facilitation by Harvest Plus, Another partner who's coming on board with the bundled up services to enhance our provision of certified seed in expanding beyond just the providing seed under soy, but also other commodities such as maize, groundnuts, as well as various legumes. And lastly, uh, CGIR, uh, that then under the excellence in agronomy provides us with an advisory data. And as a use case, we aim that we would like to increase our bundled up services, as well as our digital agronomical advisories that help us take agronomy to scale and accelerate soil production within the Chinyanja Triangle. Hence, the minimum viable product, or the Hakilimo 2, becomes quite very critical as part of our equal and digital systems in Kubuno to allow farmers access advisory information that then addresses key issues within the Chinyanja soy production areas. Next slide. With this, based off on our Kuvuno ecosystem, with information from our various digital platforms, allow us aggregate data that becomes quite very essential in the development of the soy advisory tool. Once this tool becomes available, it is then integrated into our ecosystem through our already existing digital tools that our farmers are already engaging in with this Wadi, a chatbot that allows us to uh, display all services that are available to smallholder farmers in order for them to access, request, as well as engage with the necessary information for them to make informed decisions. Last slide. With this, under the use case, we envision to utilize two critical platforms under Kuvuno. One, which is Wadi, the chatbot, that then becomes the viable channel through which the Hakilimo MVP product or soy uh, advisory tool will be integrated in order to allow farmers access this particular service. With the aid of a Solidarity Digital ID, an identification that is given to the farmers at the onset of our interaction, enables us track farmer engagement into our various services and products. Whilst in the process, still collecting ample data that then allows organizations such as uh, Excellence in Agronomy or Solidarity make informed decision on what targeted interventions or approach do they need to design their projects around. Uh, thank you very much and good day. 
Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Given. Um, thank you, Isaiah. We've we've come to the end of the presentations and um are now open for questions coming through from the audience. Please feel free to use the QA um functionality to ask um questions. Um thank you, Frank. I see your question. It says um is soy health advisory as a central pillar of agronomic gain integrated in the use case? If yes, how is it done? I am going to pass this question on to, to Isaiah. Isaiah Frank um, recently joined us as one of our, our soil experts in the excellence in agronomy um, based in Kenya. And he's asking if we've actually integrated um, you know, soil health advisory into, into the use case? And if so, how has it been done? Isaiah, can you take this question for us, please? Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, I think I'll try to, well, th firstly, thanks for the question, uh, Frank. Um, it's a very interesting issue you raised there. We definitely are taking on cell soil health with the site-specific uh, fertilizer recommendations component. There we're looking at um, looking at the main uh, nutrients, uh, macronutrients, NPK that are required in the system, and uh, we're also looking at uh, reinforcing that with the use of uh, inoculants on the nitrogen part as well. Um, and so a lot of the focus of our work is uh, on some of the experiments that we call the nutrient omission trials. Those trials are seeking to address the soil health component uh, in terms of the fertilizer recommendations. Uh, but uh, you can imagine that uh, we will not be able to address everything, the soil uh, biology side of things, the microbiology side of things, we don't effectively address as, as of now. But uh, this would also be interesting issues to, to tackle. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, we're trying to help farmers be able to decide what is the best fertilizer to use in the uh, location that they have. What you heard from Lydia is even a step up uh, or a gear up where farmers then are able to get a very, very um, accurate and specific fertilizer recommendation based on soil analysis. You can imagine that soil analysis is not something that can be done by every farmer everywhere. So we're trying to use some kind of general uh, site-specific recommendations, which are based mostly on soil type and probably the management that has been applied in the past to give the best bet kind of recommendation. But it doesn't take away the need for a proper soil analysis. I hope I answer you, Frank. Thank you. Um, thank you for that, Isaiah. I, I do foresee um, further conversations going on after this um, among the team. Um, just to explore um, the, the question further. Um, Lydia, I think this one is for you. It says, excellent. It's coming from Christo Gunas Daudu. I hope I have not met at your name, um, pronouncing it, but Christa, I'll call him Chris, um, is asking a question. She, he says, excellent and interesting presentation on digital systems. Not clear how you have used digital services to provide advisory services and how provision of digital advisory services have impacted on farmer yields and income. So Lydia, maybe you, you can share more on that. You would like to know more about how we have used digital services to provide advisory services and how the provision of these digital advisory services have impacted on farmer yields and incomes. Lydia, over to um, you. Thank you very much, Barbara. Uh, that's actually a very interesting question. Uh, so I think farmers engagements and interaction with Kubuno is centered around services that we have deduced uh, based on some of the data and engagements that we have with our farmers through our lead farmer models. Um, essentially how we provide advisory data is uh, with all the different digital platforms that farmers engage with, whether it is from soil testing uh, and when they plant it into their fields, 
and how much of the inputs or expenditure was spent on that versus the yield that comes out of that particular field and what was the selling price for that becomes the basis on which we support farmers to understand how farming is either a viable business and how they are comparing from one season to another. Now, if you saw earlier on, I introduced a platform called Wadi. Wadi is our auto chatbot. Essentially, it is our central ecosystem that pulls data from various tools that farmers engage with and provides that 360 loop to provide feedback on how a farmer is performing under particular uh, agronomical practices. So by keying in their farmer ID in the YD platform, it allows farmers access profile and information on their business or how their agricultural farming season is actually looking like. In addition to that, they are also able to understand their financial standing, looking at what they have input into the production season versus the outcome that comes out of that. And obviously through this, we also support them with what we call uh, an impact um, index um, uh, measurement tool that allows the farmers assess how they will perform in the next particular season in relation to climate issues and whether they would be resilient enough. And if not, then they would need to perform certain recommendations that are provided through our chatbot. It is through this particular channel, which is Wadi, which becomes our central ecosystem that pulls information from our various tools or services that then supports farmers with the necessary advisory information. I hope that answers the question. Um, thank you very much. I even raised your hand. Would you like to support that um, feedback from Lydia? Yes, I, I just wanted also to add that the digital platform is benefiting the farmers because one of the elements of the uh, digitalizing their, their, their farming uh, activities is whereby the, the, the Kivuno staff is able to calculate how much uh, land the, the farmer has for a particular crop. For example, if, if a farmer has two acres, so when they GPS the plot, the, the, the Kivuno agent is able to advise the farmer the seed rate that is uh, needed for that particular type of land. We've seen a lot of farmers where they just plant uh, according to their thought without knowing how much seed they should put in. So in most cases, they put in a few seeds, which in the end they harvest less on the same land, which if they applied the recommended seedlet, they, they will help a farmer to decide how much seed they should put in, not to put much, not to put uh, less. But also because we, we have mapped their uh, fields, it's, it's possible to predict how much is going to come from certain clusters uh, by way of adding up those plots to say so many farmers are growing uh, some uh, uh, so um, as uh, the buyers uh, in terms of what is expected from a certain area. Thank you. Thank you, Given. Um, I see Isaiah, you've raised your hand. Before we come to you, um, may I ask Given or Lydia to just tell us in one word, um, is the soil testing service free for farmers? Um, and if it's free, how, how do farmers access it? Um, you can give us those details and we'll share with the rest of um, the, the attendees on, on, on this call. Uh, thank you so much, Barbara. Uh, so the soil testing service is essentially 50-50. Uh, it is essentially free uh, because we actually subsidize it. Uh, in order to close the gap of accessibility, but it is not essentially very free completely to the smallholder farmers. And the reason for that is just to ensure that farmers understand the investment that is required in order for you to perform within a particular business context, in this case, the agricultural practices. But the price at which they actually get the soil testing is essentially free as it is actually subsidized. 
Uh, the Kuvono agents are there to support on the ground in terms of accessibility of the soil test. Uh, through our lead farmer model or our Vono circles groups or clusters, farmers request for the soil testing service through our chatbot called Wadi that is actually found on the communal smartphone that is in the hands of the lead farmer. Once this has been requested, a notification is sent to our agents who are then responsible for following up with the farmers utilizing the GPS coordinates that were collected during the registration process in order to identify the location of the homesteads of the farmer, as well as support the farmer to the field to facilitate the soil collection process, as well as the analysis of the results uh, and uh, uh, as well as the analysis of the soil at the hub, as well as the dissemination of the results or report, as well as interpretation. Thank you for that. Um, Isaiah, over to you. We've got less than a minute uh, to... Yeah. Just quickly to say that uh, part of the field uh, on-farm validation experiments that we are carrying out are also meant to answer the question of whether or not the advisories help to improve yield. So we have one component where we try to refine the tools and then one component where we then try to look at whether or not it is uh, helping farmers. So it's a, a complex process uh, which we're trying to combine um, and run in a kind of a parallel phase. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, that's how it is. So, so there are certain components where we definitely are having answers to, to your question that yes, it is increasing yield, but in some cases we're not yet too sure. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, for, for the presentations. We've come to the top of, of the hour. Um, to our delegates who attended today, this is just one of um, the few um, webinars that we'll bring to you um, as, as part of this use case, because we would like to take you on a journey with us. We would like you to come with us and see um, the changes you know, the change that matters, as Solidaridad would say, um, on the ground happening in the Chinyanja Triangle as a result of the collaboration um, between the CG, um, between um, Solidaridad and, and other partners. And uh, with that, um, you can see on the screen, we've shared some of um, the contact details. We will add um, Kivuno and Solidaridad's contact details as well. Um, and share the slides with, with everybody who's attended. And we would like to thank you. We've come to the end of the session. If there are any questions that have not been attended to, we'll definitely take care of that and send as part of um, the slide and video and recording share um, at the end of, of this session. Thank you very much. May I ask the panelists please to stay?